So today's video will be a little bit different. I got myself a thermal imaging camera that'll actually see infrared heat that's given off by uh, objects and whatnot. So let's take a look at the Jeep after a, uh, I took this thing on an hour drive in uh, cold weather. It's about 32 out. And you can see that the uh, the tires are actually heating up from uh, all that driving. I guess an hour drive produces a lot of friction, really warms them up. So you can kind of see uh, what kind of heat's really built up in the tires when you're driving around down the uh, the pavement. I thought it was kind of neat that they actually uh, they heat up so much. When you come to the front of the truck, you can see the obvious. It was also at night, so you can tell that the headlights were on and everything, whatnot. Uh, I'm going to switch to a different clip real quick, though. Uh, this was a different cold night. And um, you can see the uh, the heat that was coming out of the uh, the cracks where the hood closes. And um, if you look at the windshield, you can actually see that the uh, that the froster was on. So you can see where it uh, it actually heats up the windows a little bit right near the uh, wiper blades. If you come to the back, the uh, rear defroster was also on. And if you look carefully, you can see that uh, some of the strips don't work. So this would be cool to find um, you know part of your rear defroster, or figure out what lines don't work. So I thought that was kind of cool. But uh, anyway, back to the other clip. Come up to the front. And as you'd expect, these tires are just as warm. But something interesting, the uh, insides of the tires are actually slightly cooler than the middle. So I wonder if that's something to do with uh, the camber or the toe or something like that. But it's just interesting that you could read a tire through uh, thermal imaging to see what it's actually doing, see the contact pattern and the wear and whatnot for uh, a short time drive or whatever. But if you come over to the underneath, you can actually see the uh, the differential is quite warm for how cold it is outside, 68, 70 degrees. I guess all that fluid, you know, getting smashed around all day through those gears really warms them up. You can see the exhaust and the engine and everything like that. It's kind of warm, you'd expect. The, uh, you can see the back of the rotor over here. It's anywhere from 80 to 90 degrees, so not as hot as I was expecting, honestly. So I guess uh, if you really had to, you could pick it up or touch it. It's not like it's going to burn you. It's warm, <laughs> that's for sure. You can see the, uh, the steering components and the uh, the steering stabilizer is actually cold. I thought that was interesting. I guess I wasn't really using that much of the steering, so it wasn't able to warm. But maybe if you're, you know, pre-running in the desert or something, your shocks might get a little bit warmer. If you look underneath, you can see the exhaust and uh, the floorboards and everything like that. And uh, if you look carefully, you can actually see that the rear drive shaft is warm too. That's kind of cool. Come over on this side, get a better look at the exhaust. Crawl underneath here. Let me get positioned. So you can see the exhaust pipe anywhere from 230 degrees or so on from the front and cooling down. You get closer to the, uh, the catalytic converter, it's close to 290 on the pipe. Now when I mounted this thing, I put the heat shield on upside down so the heat shield's facing the ground. So that's why it's reading a little cold. You can see a, a clip there where it's showing almost 300. So it's kind of warm. Come back towards the uh, the muffler and it's a little cooler. I don't know if there's like mud or dirt on it or something or it's rusting out or whatnot, but the pattern on there is kind of cool. You can see when you get towards the back, it cools down. So let's hop inside and take a look. So as you can see, kind of warm. The uh, the transmission tunnel over here is actually kind of toasty. I don't know if that's from uh, the transmission or the exhaust or whatnot, but that part of the floor seems to get the warmest. You can see everything else has a gentle little amount of heat coming off of it. If you come out towards the back, take a look, move this crap out of the way. You can actually see uh, even through the floor mat that it's actually kind of warm. So I guess the uh, the exhaust warms up that side of the floor. Uh, quite a bit because if you look on the driver's side there's almost nothing so kind of neat passenger gets nice warm feet <laughs> let's come around to the other side take a look at the driver's side so looky there so if you look you can actually see uh, heat on the uh, the driver's seat which is kind of neat I mean you know I've been sitting in it for an hour or two you can, you can see uh, compared to the passenger seat it's a lot warmer you can see just all around everything's just kind of warm you can see the steering wheel is kind of cool. Everything else is nice and warm. Gauge cluster, the whole dash really. Take a look at the, uh, the the transmission tunnel over here. You can see it almost gets up to 100 degrees. It's probably about the warmest part of the floor. And that's not terrible, you know. Especially in colder weather. <laughs> Keeps you nice and comfy. Take a look at the, uh, the vent over here. I had the heat on full blast. 85 degrees is kind of pitiful. You can see the radio is nice and toasty. That thing actually gets hotter than the, the heater vents do. 
which is kind of depressing. <laughs> Come down here, oh, 90 degrees, you know, almost. The engine doesn't put a whole lot of heat out. See some heat under the glove box. Take a look at the um, the gauge cluster or whatnot. It's kind of warm. So let's pop the hood and take a look at the exciting stuff. All that toasty engine business. All right, there we are, the engine. Ooh, exciting. So you can see all the heat that the um, the hood mat or whatever absorbs. Getting a little closer to how we're actually looking at here. See the uh, the alternator and the heater hoses and all that. The alternator looks cool, but that's just because of the way that the uh, the camera app kind of just auto scales the heat. It basically just shows the hottest thing is warm instead of relative. Anyway, you can see the uh, the fuel pump relay down at the bottom there, and the uh, the coolant reservoir and the line that feeds it, which uh, is warm throughout. Take a look over here at the valve cover and uh, the thermostat at uh, you know 190 degrees. Just what the thermostat opens at, so I guess that's a good sign. It means that's working properly. You can see part of the uh, the exhaust manifold sitting in the corner there. And whatnot. Follow the um, you know the heater hoses and everything where they go. Come over to this side. I want to show you a different clip that I took. You can actually see the uh, the fuel pump ballast over there. It's actually kind of warm. I thought that was neat. So you can see if that thing's working properly, if it's warm or not. If you come over here, you can see the um, the line coming off the uh, the radiator cap a lot better. You can actually see the heat and everything. It's kind of hard to see the radiator through the fans though. Switch back to this clip. You can see the uh, the intake's nice and toasty, along with the uh, power steering pump and the radiator and whatnot. Nothing too exciting over here, you know. Just the radiator, a little bit of heat here and there. Nothing too exciting. Same thing towards the back on the intake. Everything's about the same temperature. Hopefully the, uh, the heat shield kind of helps that a little bit. But come down here, the power steering pump, you can actually see the uh, the belt's kind of warm, 115 degrees. So I guess that gets a little bit of friction, huh? Nice and toasty. This would be a cool method of uh, seeing if any of the bearings are blown or uh, messed up, if they're really warm, a lot warmer than the other bearings. Kind of neat to see them heat up or whatnot. But, yep, yeah, that's the engine bay for the most part. That's what we're looking at. You can see the, uh, the cooling system is pretty much the hottest thing you're going to see here. So let's see if I can close the hood and we'll take a look at uh, some other stuff. So if we come down to the bottom you can actually see uh, some of the oil that dripped onto the ground. I thought that was kind of funny. You can actually see the uh, the heat coming off that. So that'd be an unconventional way to find uh, an oil leak or at least you know oil drips on the ground or whatnot. But there you go. There's the, uh, the Jeep after about an hour drive. Warm tires, warm engine, lots of warm things cool to see what actually heats up and everything. This camera's really awesome. <laughs> You'd be amazed at uh, what kind of uses this thing actually has. The uh, the camera that I bought is um, a Seek thermal camera. Runs you about 250 bucks, which is really cheap uh, compared to the prices of uh, thermal imaging, which is, you know, within thousands of dollars or more. So this is extremely affordable. So, you know, be great for checking out automotive work, stuff around the house. It's just, it's really multi-purpose. You'd be surprised what you can actually see with this thing. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching.